we're going to do some examples now where we try to find the image associated with an object sitting in front of a lens. And of course, this is really the reason we go through this part of the class is because when we construct a system like a camera or a telescope, we want to know how it is that this lens will produce an image for us. So there are two methods that I'd like to go through. One is a graphical technique of locating the image, and one is an algebraic technique, again, using this simple equation that we've learned so far. We'll go through these separately, but I would like to make sure that we cover both of them because I think they, they help us with our intuition on how to solve these kinds of problems. For simplicity, let's begin with the algebraic technique. It's simply an application of this, this equation we learned before, and uh, we'll try a, a couple examples using that technique. So if this might be a typical problem you would see. Uh, if an object is placed 40 centimeters in front of a diverging lens, one with a focal length of negative 30 centimeters, I could ask you what is the image distance i and what is the magnification m. This would again require us to go back to our expression 1 over p plus 1 over i is 1 over f and start to put in numbers for those things that we know with the correct signs. The, we are told that the object is placed 40 centimeters in front of the diverging lens. So p is 40 centimeters and it's a positive number because object distances are always positive. We don't know i. In fact, that's the thing we would like to know, so we're going to leave it as is. And the focal length, 1 over f here, well, that's being told to us is negative 30 centimeters, so we're putting minus 1 over 30, or you can say I have said 1 over minus 30 uh, centimeters. It, it's the same either way. It's a diverging lens, so this is a, probably a, a concave lens of some sort. It has a negative focal length. If we solve uh, this expression, we have 1 over i, we move terms around, uh, is equal to minus 1 over 30 plus minus 1 over 40. If I go to least common denominator, uh, that's 120. And that becomes minus 4 plus 3 over 120. Or in other words, uh, i itself is 1 over that. It's about 120 sevenths. But notice it's a negative number. And that means it's a virtual image. That's a, an, an image where the, the image itself is on the same side of the lens as the object. The magnification, just like in the case of mirrors, is always defined as minus i over p. This is the thing that tells us how big the image looks. Does it look shrunk relative to real life? Does it look uh, enlarged compared to real life? And the sign of this magnification is going to tell us about how, uh, how it looks flipped or not flipped compared to real life. So if I put in this minus 17.1 centimeters down here, it becomes positive because I'm taking minus i. p is a positive number, by the way. So I have minus of a minus 17.1 centimeters divided by 40. And I come up with a number of 0.43. Notice that it's less than 1. That means that the image looks shrunk relative to real life. It's a, a lens that when I put an object at that location makes the object look smaller. The fact that it's positive means that the image is what we call erect. It's upright and not inverted relative to real life. How do I get some uh, picture in my head about what that means? Because sometimes you want to check your answers well, there's a graphical technique, and I want to compare the graphical technique to the, uh, the algebraic technique that we just did. The graphical technique can be best done, or most efficiently done, if we draw some rays that go from the object in into the lens. And there are three rays I want you to think about in particular. You can draw a zillion rays coming off the object and going into the lens in all different directions. But a few of them will help you most quickly decide uh, what the image looks like. I'm going to put them right here. First, you want to draw one, one ray that goes uh, parallel to the center axis of this picture directly into the lens. So if I have an object and it's sitting right there, and it's sitting in front of my lens, and remember I said that this is a, f a particular lens with a negative focal length. This is probably a concave lens. So I just happen to draw a, con a concave lens right here. 
The first ray I'm talking about is one which goes parallel to the center axis of the picture. So it's going to go in straight like this. We said before that parallel rays get focused toward the focal point. Well, this is a concave lens, so they never get focused down. They get focused away. And what they tend to do is they get focused away in such a way that it looks like it's coming from the focal point. So I drew this ray going out such that if I drew a dotted line going back, it would hit the focal length. And I knew the, knew the focal length because we were told that in this problem. We were told that it was minus 30 centimeters. So I would place the, uh, a, focal a dot here for the, where the focal point is at minus 30 centimeters. I also knew that the object is at minus 40 centimeters, or excuse me, positive 40 centimeters, but that means 40 centimeters away from the lens. So I knew it's a little bit further back. So in this picture, I took light ray number one to be the one that diverges away such that it extrapolates back to that focal length. Light ray number two is one that goes through, through what we call the center axis of the, of the whole system. In other words, this dotted line right here. So I take a, a light ray that goes from the tip of this object and goes right down and hits there and keeps on going. Why is that a particular convenient light ray to choose? Well, at this very point, it's almost the case that the two surfaces of the lens are parallel to one another. They're almost like that. And we know that when light goes into a parallel slab of glass or plastic or something, it may refract in the glass, and, but it refracts again on its way back out, and it, it's going to leave at the same angle as it entered. So we can kind of approximate that this is a ray that's going in a straight line, a perfect straight line. And there's a third ray, uh, one that's coming parallel out from the lens. And All lenses have two focal points, one on the positive and one on the negative side. Um, if we imagine that light was coming from an object over here, uh, what would it do? It would, it would diverge out. A light ray that's coming out parallel is one that looks like it's heading toward that focal, focal point right there. So it's going in like this, but it will get focused away. So it's that kind of light ray. It looks like it's going to that second focal point. And if I extrapolate this back, it never meets up with the other two, but it meets right there. I notice that the dotted lines or the actual light ray all meet at that, at that point. And what that means is that the image is right here, and the top of it, you know, the little arrow, is on this side of the center axis, so it's not an inverted image, it's an upright image. And notice that it looks shrunk relative to the original object. So this, in a graphical way, teaches me something about the problem. It teaches me that I have a virtual image. It's over on this side of the lens. It teaches me that I have an upright image because the three rays crossed right there. And it teaches me that um, the, the magnification of this, uh, image, this object is less than one because the, the size of this image is smaller than the size of the original object.